Now, if you've ever done research on Etsy, there's probably one mock-up that you recognize as it reappears in many, many best-selling listings. And I mean the one that we can see right here twice on the left-hand side. And this is probably one of the most popular, best converting mock-ups on Etsy. If I scroll down further, I'm sure we'll find more examples yet. There's another couple, three of them. Two of them have a popular now, one of them a bestseller badge. Let's take a look at the second page. Here's another one popular now. And now we've got four instances of that very mock-up or with a popular badge. And here's a really good example of a super, super well-selling listing in Etsy with that very mock-up, estimated to get 1,500 sales a month right now, and it's Etsy's pick. Same goes for this listing right here, about 1,600 listings, also with the same mock-up. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this is the actual mock-up is for sale on Etsy, as you can see right here, for just three or four dollars. And I know how to take this mock-up and then prepare it so it looks realistic and generate it in bulk for multiple designs at once super quickly and easily and I want to teach you that as well and you can replicate the same process for all kinds of mock-ups by the way it's not just for this specific mock-up right here if you learn this process you can do this with many other mock-ups as well that you find on Etsy now what's also important to note is that this video is split up into two parts the first part is significantly longer than the second because it's the preparation of our template and the good thing is you only have to do the first part of the tutorial once per mock-up then in the future you can always skip to part number two where you're just generating the mock-ups in bulk for your designs and that only takes like a minute or two whereas the preparation probably takes you about 10 to 15 minutes so there's a bit of upfront work but don't worry you only have to do that part once so to get started with this you need two things first of all the actual mock-up itself so if you want to get the same mock-up, follow along with this process. I'll have a link to that listing on Etsy in the description down below, but it doesn't have to be the same mock-up. And you also need a placeholder file for the actual design itself on your mock-up. And I would recommend right here having the same dimensions as the print file or the design file is going to be. In my case, because these mock-ups are for comfort color shirts, the print file is going to be 4,200 by 4,800. Now you can make these placeholder files yourself, but I will also leave a free download on my website website to a few of like the most popular t-shirt print file dimensions down below so you already have some placeholders to get started with this one will be included in that so you need a mock-up and you need to download those free placeholder images ideally to get started now if you want to do this for a very specific product and you're not sure what the print file dimensions are just head to my designs i have a link to that down below as well and then you can click on product catalog and type in the name of that product so for example comfort colors right here if i type that in this is the shirt that we're designing this mock-up for if you are using swift pod to fulfill this shirt then these are your dimensions as you can see so you can find out all of this in the product catalog right here with in my designs. Once you've got both the mock-up and your placeholder file ready, you need to jump into Photoshop and create a new document. I'm going to set this to 2000 by 2000 pixels and give it a relevant name up here and probably just the product type and then mock-up. By the way, don't get confused with these dimensions. This is what our actual mock-up that we upload to a listing is going to be. It doesn't have to be the same as the print file dimensions. So now I'm going to hit create right here. And the first thing we want to do is is hit Control R on my keyboard and drag out some rulers. I want one from the left hand side, I'll let it snap in the center right here. And the same from the top, I'll drag one down and let it snap in the center because I want to know where the center of this image is kind of the focal point where we want our design to be. Now I'm going to find the mock-up on my device and just drag and drop that right here. And then we need to resize this because we want to ideally have what well, the center of the shirt match the center right here of our document where the two highlight lines meet. And we also want it to be quite zoomed in. So the design is quite big and easy to see. And But you still want to be able to see that this is a t-shirt. Like you don't want to do this right here where, you know, it's it just looks like a gray background and not really like a product. You want to find a good kind of compromise where kind of, yeah, kind of along these lines where yes, you can tell it's a shirt and you also have your design very big and centered in the middle of this. So there we go. Once you're done with the resizing, you want to find the placeholder image and then drag and drop that 
into this document as well. And then we need to resize this to match the mock-up where we want the designs to be placed essentially. So here the goal is to have this quite big and covering as much as we can within reason, right? You don't want to like go all the way to the edge. That would, you know, it looks silly with all these creases and um, it would be way bigger than the actual print in real life. But I think if we have this kind of along these lines right here, let's take a look at it. Uh, you can get rid of the rulers as well now by just dragging them back to the sides and the top. Take a look at this. I think this would be great for our placeholder because this is where our design files will be placed into, into this box right here. All right, so now that's done. You might notice if you zoom in, it doesn't look very realistic this mock-up on the shirt, like it looks way too kind of bright and, and like a, you know, like a graphic online, not like an actual mock-up. Don't worry, we're going to fix that in a second here. But before that, what's very important is you need to rename this placeholder layer right here for this image in order for the bulk creation to work later on. So we'll double click into this layer and we'll call it MD dash image dash design and then hit enter. And now we can carry on with actually making this look a bit more realistic. In order to do that, we'll take the mock-up image down here and we'll duplicate that. So I'll hold Alt on my keyboard and then click on the mock-up and drag it above our placeholder image. So we want this order right here. Then for this top layer, you need to change the blending mode from normal to hard light. And at first glance, that you know, it does look a little bit more realistic. You've got some texture coming through from the shirt, but it's also very dull, but not to worry, we will fix that. And this will look different depending on what sort of mock-up you've used. If the shirt is a different color, different shade, uh, this might look completely different. But anyway, so now we also need to snap this top layer to our design placeholder. In order to do that, you have to hold down Alt on your keyboard. And then if you go in between the two layers, you'll have this little arrow symbol appear. And once that appears, just left click, and now this top layer is only being applied to our actual design. And now you can also see a bit of a before and after. So this is before, this is after. Bit better, but it's harder to see now. So what do we do in order to fix this? Well, you need to have your top layer selected again, and then head over to Image, Adjustments, Curves right here. Now I would recommend zooming in quite a bit into this design and then having the Curves window right here next to it. Now you can play around with the input settings. So for example, if we go to the right and we drag this white slider right here to the left, you will see it getting brighter and brighter. Now you don't want to overdo this because the more you do it, the more white you get and it just looks washed out and not realistic again. So you need to find the sweet spot where it doesn't look overexposed like this, but it's also not too dull so people can't really see the design. So I think for me that sweet spot is about 160 perhaps, maybe 170, around that range. And again, this will differ depending on the mock-up. You can't always copy this exact number and it will work out. Um, if you have a different color mock-up, it probably is going to be a different number as well. Now the black input slider right here, let's test that out. If we increase that, it just it kind of makes it worse, makes it harder to see. So we'll leave that. Maybe we'll try and turning it up down here. So if you click on this dot and drag this up, uh, I think that might actually look a little bit nice if we drag this one up kind of so let's just go a little bit like 15 perhaps because again if you do it too much it you know it, it messes things up and um, so you have to be careful with these but you can definitely get the hang of it if you if you play around with it a few times so there we go i think that looks a lot better if we zoom in as well and then hit okay we can do the before and after by hiding this layer so this is the before just a plain a very flat graphic and this is after looks a lot more realistic and it's still easy to see easy to read um, so it's not really taken that away from us right there we go that is essentially the preparation of our mock-up or our psd file in this case psd template within photoshop all done you just have to make sure to hit Control s and actually save this file on your device and now we can move on to the next step so for the last stage of this process i will be using my designs because it can help you generate those psd mock-ups like the one that we've just prepared in bulk very easily and if you're new to my designs they do have a free plan right here i don't think the custom mockups feature is included in that however i do also have a discount code so if you want to for example do the monthly starter plan right here you can type in pa25 and that should get you 25 percent off and that works for both the monthly and the annual plans 
Now, once you've logged into the My Designs dashboard, you want to go to the Mockups tab over here. Make sure you click on Custom Mockups and then select Upload Mockup in the top right corner. Now you need to choose the mockup from our device. So just find the PSD file that you just saved and hopefully you gave a relevant name to, and then it might take a few seconds to get that imported right here into My Designs. Once that's done, you've got the option to rename it or change the category, and then you click Upload Mockup. And now I would recommend linking it to the relevant products. So in our case, that is Comfort Colors uh, 1717. So we we'll link those two right here. And um, also is for Publish. Now this will, if you select Front Print right here, this will let you also choose this mockup during the publishing process without having to generate it in the listings tab. If you're new to my designs, that might sound confusing, but those of you who have been using it for a while, yeah, you might want to enable this to make things easier. And then we just click Save Changes in the bottom right corner. And now we can head to the Listings tab, which brings us to the second part of this tutorial. Like I said at the beginning, this is essentially the steps that you will keep repeating from now on to generate your mockups very easily. And um, you don't have to do step one again, unless you want to have a different mockup to generate in bulk. So all what we're going to do now happens in the listings tab. We need to click on this up here on home, and then you want to create a new folder. So let's say, for example, you are uploading some bootleg themed designs, just call the folder bootleg right here. You can use the default template, click add new folder, then select that folder from your options and open it with this button in the bottom right corner. Then you want to click on upload files right here, choose the first option, then drag and drop all of your designs into here and click upload all. Now you can do this process with uh, up to 120 listings at the same time. That's with the top My Designs plan, but even the starter plan lets you do this with 24 images at once. And you can also do it with multiple mockups for 24 designs at once. So in total, you can literally do like over 200 mockup images, even on this starter plan, which is crazy. But yeah, now you just have to wait for these to import into your folder. Once that's done, I would recommend changing this from list view to to grid view and then you want to click on this button to select all of your designs then go to the mockups shortcut and choose image mockups and now if you change the category from public mockups to custom you will then see the one that you've just uploaded and you can click on that you can generate a preview but you don't have to you can just go straight to generate the mockups confirm the action and there we go this is now running in the background you can also click on the bell symbol right here to see the progress and usually this is super quick even like 100 200 mockups typically generate in a minute, maximum two minutes. And now if we double click on this new uh, mock-up slot right here, that's just been populated. There we go. Now you can see all of them in the same place, looking really, really good. And um, if you want to carry on in my designs, you can do, I have a lot of tutorials showing you how to also fill out the listing data and then go ahead and publish everything in bulk. If you don't use my designs and you just want these mock-ups, then you can go to quick actions, download, and then make sure you have the right file slot selected because these are our original design files and then just download them to your device and um, you can zip them up as well right here and download just one zip file but yeah that's basically it i really hope this video taught you something new and helps you out on your print on demand journey and if you want to be even more efficient and quicker when generating your mock-ups you should also take advantage of what's called mock-up profiles within my designs and if you want to learn how to use those, make sure to check out this video next.